Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over how to use multimeter. We're going to work with things like finding voltage, amps, and resistance. The way we're going to go about doing that is we're going to teach you how to use our uh, multimeters we use here at Twilla Tech. This one, this one is the Owen B35T, okay? Um, this was just the one that we've decided to use. There should be about six or seven of these things laying around the shop. So more than likely these would be the ones that you're going to use. So we're going to go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to zoom in, go over all the controls, and then jump right into it. All right, so now that we're zoomed in, I want to kind of go over the whole multimeter kit here. So it's going to come with a bag. Um, first thing you're going to notice inside the bag is that these two items right here, you may never get to use these. Uh, more than likely, you're not going to use them in this class. If you're interested, uh, we could probably plug it in and give it a shot. But what this is is, this, is the uh, temp sender or temperature gauge, okay? You're also going to notice that you've got these little alligator clips, and I'm going to show you how those install onto a the test leads. And these are your test leads. You should have a black and a red one. So your test leads, they have this protective covering over the end here, and it just screws off like so. And you can take your alligator clip, and you can go ahead and fish it down in there, and make sure it lines up with those threads, and it screws right on. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then you can uh, clip these onto wires if necessary, all right? Uh, go ahead and take these off really fast. All right, so like I said, you should have your leads, black and red. One's going to be a common and one's going to be a hot. All right, so let's go over the, the face here and some of the controls. Um, we'll, we'll probably go over them multiple times especially as we start using them in specific areas and things like that, okay? So if you don't pick it up all here, um, just wait, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it some more. So first thing we're gonna point out is this digital display up here at the top. All of your readings will come up on this digital display. Uh, any, there's no other place you're gonna get any other information but right here. And we're gonna go ahead and flip it on. We're gonna go ahead and turn the first, I don't know if you can see this V right here. Um, this V is used for voltage. Um, this will be AC and DC. Now some multimeters have an AC and a DC in a separate, but in for this one, we have it all on one. I'll show you how it works. Just click it over. You can see that we're, we're looking at DC right now. And we have millivolts. We're gonna hit the select button. And that's gonna change it to AC. And also now it's just also on voltage, okay? Looks like we change it back, it's on millivolts, all right? So the next one, as we click up, I guess I should have pointed out that we're now going to talk about this uh, center dial, and I'll call it center dial multiple times throughout this video, okay? Next thing we got, we got the millivolts. Again, you can hit AC and DC. Um, these are just for a smaller level of voltage, maybe if you're doing something with a, uh, with a robotics or something, a much smaller voltage, okay? We're going to twist it again. You're going to see that this one will be for our ohms and checking diodes and has a siren, things like that. Um, remember checking the ohms will be for checking for resistance, okay? Next, we're gonna have our hertz. Again, remember hertz is a form or is just talking about the, the type of AC voltage that we have and how many hertz it is, okay? This next one, and we, we won't be doing a heck of a lot with this one. In fact, I don't think we'll use this one all in our class. The next one is for testing transistors. We won't be doing any testing of transistors um, in this class, maybe later in a robotics class, okay? The next one here is our temperature. Um, we have all the stuff in our bag if we ever want to check temperature. If you'd like to learn how to do this, let me know. These are, if you have a FLIR or a um, just a, a temp gun, they'd probably be better than using this temp, temperature gauge, okay? Now, now this next one, these next two are, I always get these ones mixed up. One is for microamps and milliamps. I think this one's for micro and this one's for milli. Um, the, again, this is some very small uh, measurements here. Um, typically everything we're going to do is we're going to need actual amps, which will be this guy right down here. We go flip it all the way down here. Again, notice that it's in DC. So if we hit it, we're now doing AC. Okay. Now let's go ahead and we'll flip it all the way back and let's look at the volts a little bit more. So one thing I want to point out about the voltage here is this is an auto ranging right now. If we wanted to change it to manual, we would go ahead and hit the range button a few times. You notice, can you see how this uh, decimal point is moving? That's just changing the range that you're measuring something in. Again, if we moved it off and then back on, 
it'll go right back into auto range, okay? So I would highly recommend using auto range. Um, it's just gonna make your life a lot easier, okay? Next thing I wanna point out, if you hold this button, it should light up the back screen. If it's a little bit dark, you can do that. I think if you hold it, let's see if it'll turn it off. Oh. Eh, maybe you gotta just turn it off like that, okay? Um, pretty much those are the only buttons you're gonna be needing to work with. Again, you got your Hertz. Minimum, maximum, that's like if you're measuring an area and you wanna know what the minimum and the maximum was for it. Um, this is the Bluetooth button, and I believe this stabilizes it so that um, you get a, a quality reading, okay? So let's go ahead and we're gonna just jump into a scenario where we're gonna use some voltage, okay? So the scenario we're gonna be working with is if a transformer, or we have a transformer that we think might not possibly be working correctly. The reason uh, where you're going to pick a transformer is because we can test it with our voltage, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip it to the volts. We're going to grab our, our leads over here. We're going to grab the black lead first. And we're going to plug it into the common port down here. Now the common port or the black lead will always be plugged in there no matter what you're trying to test with. The only time this one will be pulled out is when if you were working with like the temperature and then you use a different set of probes, okay? Now... Let me take a, let me grab this one. Now our red lead, if we're testing volts, if you can see there's a little volt symbol right there. There's also ohms. Um, you are gonna be plugging into this port. Now if we're gonna test for amps, we're gonna be using these ones over here. Um, and notice that this one is for your micro milliamps and this one is just for your amps, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and plug this because we're gonna be working with volts, all right? So now let's go ahead and move. Oh, first thing, we're gonna be using uh, AC. So we're gonna go ahead and flip it to the AC setting. And now I'm gonna go ahead and jump on the board and show you how to use this. Okay, so now that we got the, our uh, multimeter set up, I'm gonna go ahead and have it in a little cutout here on the, to the left side or right side. It's hard to tell for me. Uh, and I'm just gonna show you that we got, so we know that we got 120 volts coming into our transformer and then coming out of it should be 24. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take these test probes and we're gonna go ahead and test the top two terminals to see if we're getting the right voltage, okay? So we're gonna go put it here and here. And you're gonna see that we have 119 volts in AC. All right, so that's working perfectly. Now if we take them and we switch this, we do this here, we had 119 volts. Now that's because we're working with AC, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna change or have a negative. If we switch to DC, depending on which way we have our leads put, it'll have a negative or a positive voltage there, all right? No big deal. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and test. We got 120 coming in, so that means we should have 24 coming out with the particular setup that we do with this guy. We're gonna go and put it there, and we got about 25.15 volts. So we can determine that this transformer is perfect, okay? Okay, so I just wanted to quickly show you guys a, a DC test. Um, I have a battery right here, which remember batteries always have our DC power. We have our positive over on this side. We have our negative over here, okay? I've already switched it to voltage. It already comes up as DC. Remember, even though it says millivolts right here, when we go to test with it, it's gonna auto range and gonna show, you, show the voltage we would like. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my common lead and I'm gonna press it to the negative and my positive lead over here to the positive. And you can see that I have 12.61 volts. So this is just a great way to test some voltage. Um, just wanted to show you guys the, the difference here. It's not very much difference. Um, remember if I, I said about if you swap them, it'll give you a negative voltage. The voltage is still there. It's just saying it's going a different direction. Um, no big deal. And if you did want to swap these around, um, it won't matter, okay, as far as color goes. But it will kind of tell you what direction things are working, okay? Okay, so let's move on to checking for resistance. Um, pretty, pretty simple setup here. Um, notice that the leads are stuck in the same exact ports as if we were gonna check for voltage. You notice you can see that the ohm symbol right here. So we know that we need to make sure that our, uh, our um, red test or test probe needs to be put into that slot, right? Next thing, we're gonna take our center dial and we're just gonna twist these or twist it all the way up to where it's got the ohm symbol, okay? Now, this one's kind of neat where it's got an ohm symbol and this uh, speaker here. 
If you take the speaker, if we hit the select button, it's going to take you to the testing the diodes, and then we're going to go to the speaker. If you touch these two probes together now, you're going to hear a noise, which that's kind of good if you're trying to check a switch or something like that. So let's say we were going to test this uh, switch right here, and I'm going to I'm going to hold these probes together so I can do more than one hand, and we can put it right here. So we know that we're making contact through that switch. One thing that we can also look at at the same time is how much resistance we have or how much, how many ohms. And there's not very much, it's about one. Let's take and uh, let's go ahead and we'll go back to um, this one again is just checking for ohms. And this one I believe auto ranges well. I don't know if the other one does, but we'll go ahead and, yep, looks like hmm, about, the, yeah, about the same resistance. Um, whether we use one versus the other one. Sometimes you'll hear uh, some of the mechanics talking about checking for continuity. Um, typically, they're, this is kind of what they're talking about. See if that switch has continuity, things like that. Uh, so you can use the, I like the siren because, or the speaker um, because it makes a little bit more noise. So I know that it's, uh, it's working for like the switches. But now if we were gonna go ahead and we were gonna test a, a coil on say this uh, contactor, we would take and we would, hold our, or we would just test right where the wires go in, okay? And we're trying to see how much resistance is across that coil. Uh, what are we getting here? So it looks like we have about 3.6, okay? So now one thing is we could possibly, if we had a bad, our contactor we thought was bad, um, we did, we found that we had voltage going to it, we wanted to test that coil that was, you know, move that contact in and out. We could take a, a perfectly good one or one that we knew was good, test it like this, see that we have, you know, oops, see that we have X amount of resistance, three or three ohms resistance, and then we could compare it to our possibly bad one, okay? So those are some of the kind of options. Okay, so we need to hook this meter up into this circuit. First thing I want to point out is that I have installed my uh, alligator clips because I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to cut the wires and we're going to clip them on. No, this is not a typical uh, troubleshooting method. Do not cut wires and just clip right into them. Try to go to the end of the wire, but because of how our uh, circuit is laid out where we have these boxes, I can't really show you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my circuit and I'm going to see that it comes out of the transformer over here goes into the breaker, goes into this button, and then over to the light. And then this is the return wire. So on this return wire, this is the one where I'm going to be wanting to check amps. So now the big thing about the amps is that I need to run it in series. So that means I need to come out of this light into my meter and then out of the meter over back over to here. So what we're going to do is, like I said, I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to go ahead and lop it off right there. We're going to strip these ends and I'm just going to connect my alligator clips to those, okay? And then we'll go ahead and we'll fire this puppy up and show you what we got. Okay. I don't think it matters which direction you have these clips going as far as the cut or into the ports or whatnot. So, so you see that? So it's going right now, it's going into the red clip or into the red probe, through the red probe down to my uh, meter back out of the blue one, um, or back, back out of the black one, and then over to the transformer, okay? Circuit is on right now. Let's go ahead and select AC, and let's go ahead and we will push the button and see what happens. Uh, okay, push the button and see what happens. See now, right now we're reading um, 0 0.014 amps. So this light bulb does not take a very many amps, that's for sure. Um, but right now, as you can see, the wire, wire's wire been cut, so it's moving through that meter. So and that is that kind of completes how to check for amps. Um, like I said, if any, at any point, Lyle, if I wanted to see how many amps this, this particular switch took, more than likely a switch isn't gonna take a heck of a lot of amps, but it might happen. Um, we, would, we would cut the wire here, put it, install the multimeter up into this wire, and we'd be done. So I want to do a really quick review where we just kind of go over how we set up the multimeter really fast, okay? 
So first thing we're gonna check for voltage. When we're checking for voltage, we're gonna make sure we click it over to the volts, possibly hit that select button if we need to change it to AC to DC. If we have a circuit that looks like this after our meter's set up, we're gonna take it and we're gonna test. We can either take and put the, the one probe on the negative side, negative pole coming into the circuit, and then we could test here, test here, 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 even back over here, let's say. And that could tell us how many volts we have all over the place, all right? So that way if we're troubleshooting something and we need, we kind of see that the voltage goes, 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 and then stops, we can kind of figure that out. Now this is called setting up the circuit or setting up the meter in parallel, okay? Now, when we're setting up for resistance, remember all we do, we, we leave the, the um, probe set up where they are, and we go ahead and we adjust up for resistance or ohms. You go here, remember you can always hit this button and it'll do the siren or the uh, speaker if you'd like. Sounds like that. Um, now, how this would work is you're gonna take it and you're gonna be testing across something. So it's gonna be from here to here, or um, maybe you wanna test a wire to see if a wire's got a resistance in it, so you can test from here to here, okay? Sometimes you do have to remove that component out of the circuit. You definitely cannot have the voltage on, okay? These gotta be a dead circuit when you're using checking for resistance. Last, I wanna talk about amps. Now, amps is the most confusing one. Remember, when we're setting up our machine or our uh, dial-in, <laughs> Our multimeter, we gotta remove this one. Either we have to plug it into the micro or milliamp slot or into the amps. We'll go ahead and put it in there for amps for now. Remember, we have to actually in, in, integrate it into the circuit. This is called uh, setting it up in series. So we're gonna have one connector or one probe will be hooked to one side and another one will be hooked to the other. So it's actually passing through that meter, all right? So that kind of completes our whole uh, whole class on how to use the multimeter. There are some other tricks. There's definitely different things we can talk about and how to use for troubleshooting and such. Um, until we get some videos up about those, just please come and ask me about it. If it's something you want to you want to learn a little bit more, or you don't understand something, come on, let's spend some time and let's go through it. All right. Hope this helps you guys. Take it easy.